She's appeared nationwide with our leading theatre companies. Her theatre, music theatre and TV credits read like a phone book. We're so very lucky she's agreed to come and dust Professor Higgins' gramophones at 27A Wimpole Street. Please, would you make warmly welcome, as Mrs Pierce in My Fair Lady, Deirdre Rubenstein. It's wonderful to have you on board, Deirdre. And we were, we were talking earlier, um, uh, she, the, the honesty in Deirdre when she gives an interview is um, second to none. She, she recently gave one and she was asked um, what lies ahead in her career and uh, her, her response was so refreshingly honest. She said, as an actor, one seldom knows what lies ahead on the work front and as human beings, we can't know either. I'd hope to be ready for whatever eventuates and to cope with the challenges of inevitable change. And I thought that was so lovely, um, but I also thought it was so apt for Mrs. Pierce. <laughs> yes, yes, um, she has to roll with the punches, as it were. Yeah, yeah, and keep that keep that house going. Didri, you've had a huge uh, and recent success in many musicals and, and shows, uh, North by Northwest, and, and most recently, Ladies in Black. Yes. Tell us about that. They were both thrilling because North by Northwest was a world premiere of the film adapted for the stage and it had a hey kids let's put on a show aspect to it because all the effects were done by the actors in full view of the audience and uh, to have that thrilling tale told by actors doing a million changes coming on and it, 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 as different characters constantly all night and then the, the wonderful um, Mount Rushmore Climax was fantastic. And what I've just done recently is a, a show called Ladies in Black, which is a new musical based on The Women in Black, which was written by Madeline St. John, and Tim Finn wrote the music and lyrics. The gentleman you're about to meet has forged a formidable career across Australia. If you've been to the theatre since 1971, you can't have missed him. At MTC, Marion Street, Nimrod, Griffin, Belvoir, Bell Shakespeare, and of course the Sydney Theatre Company are just some of his theatrical credits. Please would you welcome to our stage our Colonel Pickering, Mr Tony Llewellyn Jones. Tony, um, welcome. I, it's almost your first musical. It is my first musical. <laughs> Except what I do in the shower. <laughs> what happened? I was actually in a production of uh, Tonight at 8.30 with Mr. Reg Livermore and Miss Nancy Hayes a long time ago. And I, I sang in a group and danced in a group, but not on my own, so to speak. Mrs. Higgins is a formidable character, a woman who can say more with the raise of an eyebrow than many can convey with a page of text. Thankfully, playing Mrs. Higgins for us in this production is also a woman who can say much with her eyebrows. As an actor, she's worked for all our major companies, as well as having an extensive film and television career. As an award-winning director and artistic director, she's been instrumental in shaping the creative life of the Queensland, Melbourne and Sydney theatre companies. Ladies and gentlemen, it couldn't be anybody else playing Mrs Higgins in My Fair Lady. Please would you welcome Robin Nevin. Hello. Robin, welcome. Thank you. Um, how many musicals have you done? I've done a couple, actually. I did The Drowsy Chaperone at the Melbourne Theatre Company a couple of years ago with Geoffrey Rush. That was wonderful. I didn't have to sing much, but I made an effort. <laughs> but actually, I was cast in the uh, production of Gone with the Wind when I was about uh, to play Scarlett O'Hara. So I guess then I could have sung. And I think my life would have gone in a completely different direction. Uh, it was to be produced here by Harry Miller, who's named Kunja. And uh, I auditioned about five times, and I got the part, and then the show was cancelled. A couple, that's fabulous. I'm very pleased, though, to be not opening my mouth to sing a note in this one, surrounded, as we will be, by very extraordinary voices. I'm the eternal mother these days. I'm everybody's mother. I've been a mother since I was about 35. I remember playing Colin Friels' mother in a movie and I was stomping around the set frequently saying, Colin is eight years younger than I am. However, I am his mother. <laughs> it's, it's the burden of being a, a woman in this country, I think. Anyway, <laughs> it's a happy burden. I'm happy to be the mother. And she is a formidable mother. She loves Eliza and is very tough on her son as more people probably should be. 
Uh, so you can see I'm coming to show quite strong views. <laughs> Um, there's a couple of special links for you, Robin, to the production, um, both through your partner, Nicholas, uh, one, of, one of whom, of course, is that he played in the film of The Sound of Music with Julie Andrews originally. Um, but the second, which I think is so lovely, is that this actual room and restaurant I recently read is so special for you, and your, your very first date with Nicholas was at a table somewhere here. <laughs> Sprung. <laughs> yes, Nicholas and I met here at the Ben Long Bar. It's been very special ever since. I think it's a very special place anyway for Sydney Siders. Nicholas is now my husband, rather than my partner. We were married in September. Congratulations. Thank you. Our other parent in My Fair Lady is Alfred P. Doolittle. And playing the dustman dad of Eliza is someone who can only be described as a legend of the Australian entertainment world. He's been gonged, awarded and praised, and booed by an audience that tried to get him off the stage. They lost, of course, uh, and when you meet the man, you'll know why. While his one-man shows are legendary, he's also headlined major musicals for Harry M. Miller and John Frost. Proudly for us, he's had a long association with Opera Australia and our predecessors, starring in many of our Gilbert and Sullivan works, as well as an earlier production of My Fair Lady. And most recently, he's been working with John Frost again on the Broadway phenomenon, Wicked. We're so pleased that he's back with us for more My Fair Lady. Please would you welcome our doolittle, Mr Reg Livermore. Welcome, Reg. Thank you. It's wonderful to be working with you again. I was terribly nervous back in my earlier days at the Opera Company uh, when Reg and I had our first engagement together. And when it came to my Fair Lady auditions last November, I met Reg in the foyer of a hotel just before he went in for a meeting with Julie Andrews. And Reg was... Well, it's fair to say I was wetting myself. Yeah. <laughs> the worst, the worst Only it was worse than that. <laughs> and, and so... Uh, tell us about that conversation. Well, it's fair to say that uh, in my now long career, I've worked with some extraordinary people. Most of the people I've worked with are extraordinary. But along the way, one also happens accidentally to meet other people who are not necessarily in the same show, but are in the same business. So. You know, the list is, is actually quite lengthy and uh, Im Im impressive, but never, never in my wildest imagination had I ever, ever thought that one day I would actually meet Julie Andrews. I, you know, I'd seen the Sound of Music film many, many times and all the other things, and I, I just... She's on another planet, really, from where I, from where I sit, you know, the planet I'm on, anyway. And so this meeting came about and naturally I was I was very 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 apprehensive not only because of the one on face to face with with somebody so famous so wonderful um, but the fact that perhaps an outcome hinged on this meeting because this this engagement is really a very privileged engagement uh, we are all of us very fortunate to be able to spend uh, will will be spending um, quality time with uh, Dame Julie Andrews. One-on-one, -on -one, uh, we, will, we'll, we'll, we will share her reminiscences about the show 60 years ago when she did it uh, originally. And um, I have to say one thing, may I? Because I said to her, I said, on the 18th of February, 1959, I arrived in London with a list of shows I wanted to see. I was a young person then, and you know we always heard about what was on. And so the things I wanted to see were West Side Story and My Fair Lady. So eventually, I arrived in uh, beginning of January, February the 18th, Wednesday matinee. I got a seat to My Fair Lady, and I got in there, and she wasn't on. <laughs> I am envious that you are all at the Sydney Opera House today to meet our fabulous cast. I cannot begin to tell you what a thrill it is to recreate this lovely show. I was the lucky lady who was asked to originate the role of Eliza Doolittle 60 years ago, and we have gone to great lengths to make this production of My Fair Lady as faithful to the original as possible. 
Our sets and costumes are being duplicated by associates of the original designers, Oliver Smith and Cecil Beaton. Our choreographer is the fabulous Tony Award winning Christopher Gatelli. And I'm thrilled that my friend, the legendary lighting designer Richard Pilbrow, will be bringing his particular brand of magic to the Sydney Opera House. Joining the cast in front of you will be the esteemed musical director, Guy Simpson. And as you can imagine, so much of the production is carried by the two principal characters in the show. For the role of Henry Higgins, the brilliant, demanding professor of phonetics, I found a wonderful actor. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to introduce you to Mr. Alex Jennings. I'm so looking forward to the whole event, to working with Reg and Robin, uh, the person you're going to be meeting in a minute, um, who's playing Eliza, and everybody else in the company, and backstage, on stage, side stage. Uh, I'm sorry I can't be with you today uh, at this, the launch, but I will be with you in a couple of months' time, my first trip to Australia. I cannot wait. Thank you. The lady you are about to meet has had great success in Andrew Lloyd Webber's Love Never Dies, as well as playing Christine in his Phantom of the Opera. She's currently starring in Guys and Dolls in the UK. Please welcome our Eliza Doolittle, lovely Anna O'Byrne. When you are 81 years old, um, if a an opera company that's performing in an opera house that's yet to be built yet approaches you to um, direct the 120th anniversary of My Fair Lady. Um, what, what would your response be? Oh, can you imagine? Um, that's amazing. That just shows the, the breadth and the reach of this show and how dear it is to so many people. Of course I'd say yes. <laughs> it's wonderful to have you on board. I know um, Julie Andrews, um, agonise is not the right word, but she was, um, she's handing over the DNA of this role to, to Anna and it's um, a decision that she's made most thoughtfully and carefully and we're just so looking forward to, to seeing the next Eliza Doolittle take to the stage. Welcome to the company. Thank you. Thank you. 